In 2000, the Russian submarine Kursk was hit by an explosion. She sank in relatively shallow waters of just 354 feet. Despite best efforts, all hands were lost. The starkest possible illustration of the dangers of submarine operations and the difficulties of rescuing trapped submariners. Eleven years on, submarine rescue has developed. In less than three days, Norwegian container ship the Rem Star has been transformed into a fully functioning rescue platform. These buildings are the decompression suite. The NATO submarine rescue vehicle is mounted at the back. But getting the kit to where it's needed is a huge logistical challenge. It can be moved by the road, air or sea, but whichever way they choose, the whole process starts in Scotland. At Prestwick Airport, 28 lorry loads of kit have been moved down from Faz Lane, where the system's based. It's completely modular, therefore totally transportable, albeit needing two C-17s and three giant Russian Antonovs to move it around. Many countries have submarine rescue systems, but they are nearly all tied to a particular mothership. Now that limits their ability to go to somebody's rescue to the speed of that mothership. We have designed the system to be able to be fitted to a number of different motions, many hundreds of them. There are 250 ships of the REM Stars type where the kit can be directly fitted, another 2,000 where it would slot in with minimal difficulty. It's something, the embarkation of the ship, we've practiced regularly uh, over the years that we've been in service. We've got better and better at it as we've made improvements to the system and the processes by which we work. And we've now got it that we are just about able to embark the full system to a ship in just over 18 hours. Once everything's in place, engineers test the decompression chambers. I'm then shown around by able seaman Alex Torbert. This is a transfer under pressure rescue system, of which this is the last stage. The rescued crews are kept at the same pressure as their submarine. That pressure is maintained as they're brought up before slowly being brought down or decompressed in these chambers. This should avoid the bends, giving them a greater chance of survival. There are five separate chambers, which can be kept at different pressures if needed. Also, there are medical facilities. This is where the medic would be when there's patients. You can put two patients on a, on a stretch case. Uh, you can lay them down like that, or you can have, if they are just like walking wounded, they can just sit up. The whole operation is monitored from the chamber control module. Start to press the pulmonary main chamber. Understood. Just give it 100% Get a blast of gas in there and hopefully we'll uh, seal the doors. And each crew member looks at a specific chamber. Very busy place, everybody has to have eyes on, very, very focused on what they're doing. Um, everybody needs to be aware and also listening out. So if something is to go wrong, uh, any alarms go on, they know how to react instinctively. But of course, to use the decompression system, the submariners have first to be rescued. And this is the submarine rescue vehicle itself. It's been christened Nemo by the crew. It can carry 16 people on here, including the two pilots up at the front of the vessel. They get the best view out of that huge glass window. And tomorrow is the big day. They're hoping to, what they call, mate with a Norwegian submarine some 80 metres under the sea. They'll join up, open hatches and take some of the crew off. And you can find out how they get on on tomorrow night's British Forces News.